from Glowforge. I'm here with Nick. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. Yes, we are doing something very exciting and never before seen on a Glowforge live stream before. <laughs> uh, if you got our email, maybe we're just popping up on your Facebook feed, but if you got our email and you're joining um, from that, we're doing a pass through print today. So. If you got a Glowforge Pro or you're thinking about getting a Glowforge Pro, this will be particularly interesting to you. Yep. And um, yep. I have a confession. I've not actually done a pass-through print on my Glowforge Pro at home. I've done it only here in the office. I don't even have it set up. I have it against a wall. So Nick is going to be driving the Glowforge today because we've improved the pass-through experience a lot, even yeah. pretty recently. And yeah. so he'll show you like the latest and greatest for that. And it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. It's pretty straightforward. Um, it might be slightly anticlimactic too. I'm not really <laughs> sure. But anyway, we know that a lot of you out there are interested to know how this works. We hear about it works. all the time. Yeah, what the experience is like, what you need to click in terms of the software and things like that. So I picked a design from our catalog. We're going to scale it up, print it at a pass-through size, and just show you exactly how that works. Exactly. And if you were watching this and you were like, what the heck is pass-through? <laughs> what are you talking about? So uh, this is a Glowforge Pro that we have here today. We also have a Glowforge Plus and basic, but the Pro has a pass-through slot. That means this slot here in the front, you can slide material through it all the way through the Glowforge and make truly enormous things like, um, well, uh, oh, we've got yeah. a few of them here today. <laughs> this giraffe right here behind us, this guy. Uh huh. We have this, which some of you may have seen before. This is the front of an A-frame sign for a business that we created. So if you have a Glowforge Plus or a uh, basic, you might be able to create something like this by, um, you know, creating seams and joints and gluing together a tall giraffe like this. Absolutely. <laughs> but with totally the pass through, possible. this was done with one piece of wood, and you'll notice that the whole whole giraffe does not fit. I just like using giraffe in, in place for pass through. <laughs> just like, <laughs> does not fit and has to slide giraffe. through. Yeah. So. Um, so we will kind of walk you through the process today with a with a different project. Nick actually just snagged a really cool project from the uh, Glowforge catalog yes. that we're gonna yeah. make pass through. I, I think it might be one that we printed before in um, normal size, actual size. I can't quite remember, but I'll show you what we're gonna it's do the today. One, yeah, it's from a few months ago, and I think it, our uh, customer Marissa. That's designed right, from the Sunny Nest Decor. Sunny Nest Decor, mm -hmm. yes, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm getting a bunch of questions or hellos at least. Hello, everybody. Uh, <laughs> We'd love to know uh, where's everybody from, by the way, and also whether you're already a Glowforge owner. JC from Miami, Florida. Um, <laughs> I think he was telling us that uh, that our camera was off center, and then I saw Mike come fix that. So. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Good looking out, y'all. That's so funny. Uh, <laughs> Renobia says hi from Texas. Um, does does it pass through from the front to back? T Tasha is asking. Great question, great question. And we're actually, throughout this live stream, gonna cover five key points that mm -hmm. you want to know about pass-through. And in answer to that one, we actually start from the back and we move to the front. So just as we have it so set up right here. This is like the one live stream where it makes sense uh, that we're standing behind the yeah, Glowforge. We absolutely. always joke about how awkward <laughs> it is. Like when we're using our Glowforge at home, like I said, mine is against a wall because I don't use pass-through very mm -hmm. often. I'm making smaller things for the most part. And so uh, we're always like reaching over like this, you know, on camera and so, but today table. this is perfect. This is a great pass-through setup. And I Absolutely. see, I mean, maybe I'll use the camera. I'm probably jumping right into this first point, but your top tip with pass-through is yeah. to keep the material flat and support both ends. And I see Nick has set up over here this little, uh, what would you call this? this so this support. is technically a roller stand. Um, people use it for woodworking, for router tables and things mm -hmm. like that. But really, you can use anything. A stack of books on a chair is often what I use at home. But something like this just keeps this material from sagging because it's a little bit flexible. And then it's going straight into the Glowforge right here, as Absolutely. you can see. So that and way it keeps it, it up just at the right height. slides all the way through like this. And then this. you could go stick another one pops in the front. The front, yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. So that's the, t the number one tip is to keep material flat and support both ends. And when we talk about material, I, I pulled this out for a second just to emphasize the difference between the Pro uh, and the Plus, uh, and the Basic, sorry. <laughs> plus and the Basic, this is the biggest size piece of material that can fit in there. Um, this is about 12 by 20 inches, and you can see just based on what's underneath here, how much bigger that pass-through sheet is. And if I pull this one out, just to hold it up, this is about, if it fits on the camera, about four feet long and mm -hmm. 20 inches wide. And essentially, you can print on anything of infinite length, so long as it's not more than 20 inches wide. Um, so it could be a roll of fabric, roll of paper, or if it's a sheet of plywood like this, where you're limited to four or eight feet in length, 
is going to be a strip like this one. And we, we sell these in the shop as well. When we first launched the pass-through software, which Nick will show us and which helps your Glowforge um, keep the whole print lined up and um, print perfectly with no seams, uh, we had launched it to like some of our VIPs mm -hmm. on our community forum and I remember someone really took the challenge yep. and I don't know where they got this piece of material. What was it? Was it wood? I know. But idea. they printed a yeah. 50 foot sign. I think it was a, I can't remember what it was. It was, it was like a stencil. It was, it was a word. Phrase. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. but it was, it, it was, and it was long too, like it was 20 inches. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know, that thing must have been cut by now because what, like, what building could you even store that in practically? Oh, I, yeah, I, have, I have no idea. <laughs> but there's a great photo of someone from you know, a fifth floor in a building looking down on the sidewalk and this thing is laid across. It's pretty impressive. Do we want to show some of the customer examples I pulled? Oh yeah, we could do I that. I pulled just a few. Um, Mike, if we could see uh, Nick's computer. I pulled just a few that I found like on Instagram um, that are different you know, fo things that folks have done with pass -through. So this one is just... Nice and simple, but very beautiful. Yeah, gosh, I want that as a tattoo. That's yeah. gorgeous. Some kind of moth, and it's almost like a little bit of a tarot look. And it, I, I can't really quite tell how big it is, but if you imagine that the width of each end is, you know, the 20 inches, it's mm -hmm. probably 30, 35 like inches. That, yeah. Maybe about it's gorgeous. just under two feet by three feet. Yeah. Um, but this is a great design that you can scale as well. Right, you, you can, can have those as earrings. And yeah, then <laughs> absolutely, a wall yeah. piece as well. If this was your logo for a store or something like that, for example, oh, yeah. you could get so much mileage out of mm -hmm. it. All right, here's another one. Um, again, a little hard to tell the, the scale here, but imagine that each of those are like, Mm, five probably by five by seven mm -hmm. photos yeah. yeah and so that's i think i believe it's a full sheet like this the four foot sheet and then they've sandwiched two of them in order to create a frame so yeah. that is really clever i and love this that is, this is a great print coming up to the holiday season as well isn't it we're thinking about gifts and, things and it like looks that like that what they get. did is yeah exactly it looks like they did like different words talented family patient Oop. hero something else oh lost it yeah I, I thought maybe I could zoom so people could oh, see nope. a little bit more easily and but it looks, so it looks like I, I at first I thought that those were on the photos but I don't think they are I think that's part of the frame kind of like pop yes. out little yeah, um, yeah phrases. absolutely that's cool you could do names you could do a frame that is specific to a trip or a wedding oh, or a whatever would be great. Mm -hmm. absolutely the names of the different cities and things Ooh, you've been I want to design this now. yeah that's nice <laughs> uh I know this is a popular one of course the height chart um yeah. I I I definitely want to invest in a height chart. I know a lot of people do it on the wall, which is really sweet. We I have think it you might have stopped growing though, Bailey. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. I mean <laughs> when I have kids. Oh, just because I think it's a shame if you move and don't have it there permanently anymore. Oh, right, I I've see. actually uh -huh. thought that would be a cool project. Sorry, a little tangent, but wouldn't it be cool <laughs> to take a photo of the wall that you've hand marked on and then use trace to capture that oh, somehow. Nice. Maybe yeah. someday. Yeah, I like that idea. <laughs> but love this. That's gorgeous from Lavender Lane Co. And then weddings or event signage, mm -hmm. obviously, with pass through Huge is one. really, really popular. No Absolutely. pun intended. That one looks like it's like, oh gosh, I don't know, maybe five feet long. Yeah, maybe that longer. looks like a it's giant pretty big. hula hoop and then. A giant hula hoop. Is that what? I don't know what you call them in this country. Maybe it's not hula hoop. <laughs> no, it is hula hoop. But it's, so, it's, it's so big. I don't know if it's a hula hoop. It's a hula hoop for a really good hula hoop. A sign hooper. hoop. I bought like little mini ones of those for yeah, name signs. Um, Earrings again. Oh, okay. This Instagrammer, my dog thinks I'm so crazy. Uh, her name is Bailey, actually. Hey, Bailey. Uh, <laughs> she does the coolest stuff. She doesn't just do one material. She is just like the ultimate experimenter with her glow mm -hmm. forge. She's do. I feel like I we have her in, as an example in many of these live streams because everything I so look creative, for, I'm like, yeah. there she is. She's done it again. <laughs> so this, I think, is a pizza paddle. It is exactly. Yeah. Pizza peel. Yeah. I and, actually have this exact one. At oh, home. do you really? Yeah. Well, yeah, have you engraved it yet? I haven't. But now that I see this, maybe <laughs> I will. Yeah. It's. I forget the brands, but it's kind of like a wood resin type material that's cool. compressed. I think. I have a few different sizes but that's a great example of using the pass-through slot not to produce a print that is super huge but to fit an irregularly sized yeah. object into the printer and reminder that the pass-through slot is uh is narrow it is it fits about a quarter inch or a little bit thicker of material yeah. so that must be a very thin pizza peel i guess it i is. don't know yeah, it's not it like is. a paddle it's not like a cutting board so to be clear you couldn't fit like a cutting board through the pass through um which you wouldn't need to unless it was a really big cutting board but <laughs> that is <true. laughs> so usually you can just <laughs> toss right in okay i'm gonna check questions really quick all right and then i think we should probably get started yeah i think you're right we're 10 minutes in. Hopefully, everybody who's going to join us is going to join us. Yeah. For those of you who uh, have just tuned in, we're doing a pass-through print today. It's something that uh, a lot of you out there have requested. Um, we're going to show you how to set this up in the software and then how to actually run the print and show you how the machine and the software joins the two halves of your print together seamlessly. And I should mention, uh, we do have a 
discount on all three models today, not just the Pro, uh, although the Pro is the best discount. So <laughs> glowforge.com slash pass through live through the end of the month, which today is what, the 24th? So like mm -hmm. another week. Yep. I guess it's a week until the end of the month. Woo! Um, glowforge.com slash pass through live. That will get you 500 off the Pro, 250 off the Plus, and 100 off the Basic. So discounts on all three models uh, going on right now. Mm -hmm. Best price that we have. Excellent. Take well, it away, Nick. Then, shall we? All right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Perfect. So uh, if my, you can switch to my computer again, I'm going to show people very quickly what we're printing today, just to give you some context. Uh, this is one of the prints I chose from the catalog. Um, it is a piece of wall art. It's layered. I think there are four layers in here, maybe three. Um, and the whole idea of this is that you can print four of them and display them together. But, and here's the but, this particular <laughs> design is created so that it fits on a single sheet of proof grade material like the one that I've lost. Uh, oh, it's that one right there. Right here. So you can imagine those four sections all nesting onto here. So the overall design is quite small. But with pass-through, what I've done is taken one of them and actually blown it up to be this big. So you can see how much more significantly bigger this is going to be. Almost double what it would be. Yeah, like another, I mean, it's going to be something like this. Something. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. oh, 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 I see. Maybe four I see. times. Yeah. So this is the first layer that I pre-printed just to give you some context. And we're going to print the middle layer that will sit on top of this. So... I'm going to go over to my computer again, and I'm just in the standard Glowforge print software. Now, this might be a little bit tricky to see, but if I zoom in there, you can see the design uh, in place, and there's multiple parts to it. Ah. Now, I already printed this one right here at the top, so we don't need that one right now, but we're going to print this one. And you can see, because I've scaled it in terms of the width to make it as wide as I can to fit on the sheet, it doesn't fit vertically anymore. There's a bit mm. overhanging, and this is where pass-through comes in. Because essentially, the software can print this part right here. We move the material, and then it'll print the next bit right there without yep. you having to do anything at all. So it's super simple. And I'll show you how it works. So we have our design ready to go. We're going to click these three dots and enable Pro Pass Through. Now, this is only available on the Pro, like Bailey mentioned. So if that doesn't appear in your menu, don't worry. Um, but this is the view that we have. And all we need to do at this particular point in time is check that our material is set up in the left-hand side like it normally would be that our settings have been uh, enabled on the left-hand side here too. We've got both a score step and a cut step. And that our design itself is aligned with the bottom of this material. Once we're happy with that and everything is okay, we're gonna pr press print. So, so far, all we've done is turn on the pass-through software and set up our print as if it was a normal print. There's yep, nothing this is different, not different about different this from anything. at all. Well, so, except for the three yeah, the feet large of material tom, sticking uh -huh, out yeah, the back yeah, <laughs> Now, actually, this is an interesting point. You don't have to use the pass-through software with pass-through material. Sure. Some people may find it better, if you're running a store or something like that, to buy bigger sheets and cook them into strips. Ah. And you could print small things on big sheets. You so just for like material that. efficiency Absolutely. and yeah. pricing and mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah, <laughs> that might work out better for some of you. Entirely up to you. But anyway, Glowforge is doing all its usual business. The head is coming across, taking a height reading of the printer, figuring out how long the print's going to take. Right now, for this first... <laughs> Right now, for this first <laughs> half, uh, we've got just under eight minutes. Talking is hard. Uh, oh, yeah, it's been a while. Um, <laughs> so just like normal, again, we're going to hit the button on the front of that printer. Bailey, if you care to do the All honors, right. we'll kick this off. Now, I've no idea how many of you out there are completely new to Glowforge and haven't seen any of this before. But what I showed you on screen is the free Glowforge software. Yes. Um, this comes with everybody's printer. It is web-based, so you can access it regardless of what design. Uh, device you use, mm -hmm. uh, Mac, PC, even on your iPad or tablet, something like this. Uh, and one really cool thing about it that I love is that this piece of software, as it's web-based, is continuously improved and developed over time with new features that are created and rolled out to you, and you don't have to download or install anything. You just visit the website, and every time you go there, you're going to be on the latest and greatest version of that software. Here's an up close. If we switch over to my phone, yeah, check that out. Look how fast it cuts. That's pretty rad, isn't it? Now, this is technically a score at this point, which is just oh, like oh, a Oh, oh, it's doing a score. Okay. Yeah, this is like a decorative uh, element, which actually for this specific design is, is to help you align the different layers. Got and it. I'll show you how that works in a sec. Um, but Bailey is absolutely right. It is very quick, way quicker than using something like a scroll saw or a jigsaw to create something like this. Yeah. Um, you can see there's just a little bit of smoke that's coming off there as it's printing as well, and that's being vented. And we'll talk about venting for those of you who aren't familiar in a second. Um, and essentially what we do right now is let the machine do its work. 
It's totally safe to watch. You can stare through this glass all day. Um, and we, we do. Yeah, I know. I mean, it's been, what, <laughs> six years now that we've been here, and it's just like, I know, it's like the first print every day. It's, it's really, really so quite magical. Fun. So. Um, yeah, so like we were saying, this is the Glowforge Pro, but we also have the Glowforge Plus and the Glowforge Basic, and there's a few differences besides just the pass-through slot. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, starting at the, the Basic, and it goes up to the Plus, and then the Pro in terms of printing speed mm -hmm. and um, uh, cooling efficiency. So the Pro was really designed to be able to print all day, uh, even in warmer temperatures, and it's the fastest. It's three times as fast, uh, or the top speed, I, excuse me, is three times as fast as the Basic and two times as fast as the Plus. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, they're all great machines, and if you don't need to print giant things and the pass-through isn't like appealing to you, those could be uh, good options for you as well. But we always use the Plus, or sorry, excuse me, the Pro for our <laughs> live streams, and the Pro is our most popular model. People do tend to choose it. Um, I, I think it's for the pass-through slot, and I think it's also just for the speed and the the all-day printing. All of that's appealing, yeah, you know. Yeah, and I think for a lot of people too, when they get Glowforge, they understand most of the possibilities, mm -hmm. but they're not entirely sure what they themselves are going to achieve with it. You might have one idea or two ideas, five ideas, but yeah. who knows where your creation journey will take you. And unfortunately with these machines, we can't upgrade them. So we can't add the pass-through slot later on. So if you think <laughs> at some point in your life, you're going to decide to create something really huge, and this could be catalog designs, it could be things you design yourself, furniture, art, whatever it might yeah. be, consider the pro just to future-proof your, your journey. Exactly. Yeah, you don't want to have pro FOMO. Pro FOMO. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we've coined uh, a new term there. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. Yeah, I, I wonder if we were to, that would actually be an interesting thing to do, like survey a whole bunch of Glowforge owners, mm -hmm. like what did you think you were going to make and then now a year later oh, or however much later, yeah. uh, what have you made? I, I just saw somebody posting like and identifying themselves as a Glowforge owner of either four or five years and I was like, wow! That's amazing. Yeah, I forget. The, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, people people that have had their machines for years mm -hmm. now, and they're yeah. like, it's so, it's so funny how many of our customers um, nickname their Glowforge yeah. units. Mm -hmm. um, we actually have a chat channel at work on Slack um, called Glowforge Names, and we, oh my gosh, some great puns. Oh, yeah. Mostly we, the we love celebrity names. Right I mean, yeah, there is. Yeah, Glowpro Winfrey. I think yes. Is one oh, that's of them, which one of my favorites. Yeah, that was yeah. a classic. Yeah. What, what is Justine's called? She's got a really good. It's got to be a Taylor Swift, surely. Oh, there's some <laughs> great ones. I'm not as good at puns, but we've got yeah. some talented staff members that are. We're also seeing a lot more people buying two machines now. Um, my next door neighbor, when I first moved to Seattle, we moved in at the same time. Turned out he had a leather business selling golf goods. Um, funnily enough, I had a leather business myself too prior to Glowforge. Mm -hmm. I was a Glowforge owner. Turned out he was a Glowforge owner too. Um, he had his machine. He you know, is focused on his business and is selling all of these leather goods. But he, oh, excuse me. Salut, uh, has recently bought his second machine because his business has taken off so significantly. Um, and he just can't keep up with the orders with only one. Oh. Ellen's in chat, she chimes in, Justine's Glowforge, Justine is one of our coworkers, <laughs> is named uh, Jay Glow. <laughs> Jay Glow, there we go. That's, that's pretty good, that's pretty good. Uh, I love it. Um, so Raven is asking here, is there a way of making prints look embossed on different materials instead of engraved? Um, Raven, if you could tell us exactly what materials you're talking about, that might help us answer it better, but I can think of a few embossed techniques, right? Yeah, yeah. Le I mean, leather is the obvious yes, one. Yeah. That's my favorite. I mean, I, I have my classic wallet that I can show you here. I don't know if Bailey can grab that. Oh, handheld. yeah. Um, this is an embossed, this exactly. Is, yeah, d technically debossed because it's Debossed, yes. Recessed rather than um, uh, in relief. Um, but I created a stamp of this design in acrylic. I just engraved it out used a press to press it into the material and it leaves this permanent mark and i've had that for four years now um you can see it's pretty well worn but that design is still there i love the patina that leather gets it's, it's, oh, so, it's so gorgeous good. yeah it really is love that um paper is another one that you could also use um a little bit more delicate um you you need to be uh when you're engraving your things not go quite so deep in case you might punch through the paper but that's absolutely possible <laughs> card things like that too um if there's any other materials you're thinking about let us know what they might be 
Let's see if we can find some examples for you. Uh, Christine is asking about the difference between scoring and cutting. So scoring is like a cut that doesn't go all the way through. Mm -hmm. So imagine uh, like origami paper that you get that's like kind of been pre-folded. Imagine that you're doing that with the laser. That was maybe not the best <laughs> example. But for that for is a great <laughs> use case though. If you're making yeah. packaging and you need to fold something, perfect use of so the score. So we use scoring to do. Um, so the difference between a score and an engrave is. It's, it's actually much more like an engrave because it basically writes or draws or creates an image or outline or whatever on the material, but doesn't yeah. cut through. But the difference between a score and an engrave is an engrave um, removes more material. The Glowforge goes back and forth uh, to actually like remove more, creates more depth, and you can also get varying um, like color results with an engrave, whereas a score stays at one level and it, instead of moving back and forth, it moves as one continuous mm -hmm. line. It's like drawing with a pen, Ex essentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And here's, here's some a couple examples. of quick examples. Yeah, yeah. So this is a score. That's a score. Now, this design you could absolutely engrave, no problem at all. But when you're engraving, we're going line by line, working away from the bottom. Longer. Exactly. It takes a long time. So sometimes switching to a score can save you some time. It's also a great way, and actually, this is being revealed really nicely in the bed. You can see in our print that's in progress right here, we have some score lines and the cut lines. The cut lines are the dark ones, score ones are the lighter colored ones. And we could peel off the paper that's been scored and use that to apply paint and use mm -hmm, it like masking. Mm -hmm. But in this case, this designer specifically created it so we can align the next layer when we glue it. So it helps with assembly too. And anything Very that's bigger than a line like this, you need to engrave, right? Absolutely. So this is a, this is a mirrored, hello there, it's us. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> a mirrored uh, acrylic tile or something. And um, that we did this from the back, so mm -hmm. it removed this dark material to create this effect on the front. Absolutely. So super versatile, I think, is the TLDR there, really. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great, a great technique. Let's see. No problem. OK. Oh, seven seconds left on this, by the way. Lovely. Uh, and I'm going to interrupt in a second because um, I want to emphasize and highlight to people what's going on. Go now, for it. You don't need to care about any of this, by <laughs> the way. Um, but on to uh, tip number two. No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip to tip number three because I forgot to do tip number two. And we'll go back <laughs> to that in a second. But there are going to be some instructions on your screen. And Mike, if you could switch to that really quick for me. You'll see in the sidebar here, it's telling us that the Glowforge is taking pictures. And then if we can go back to this, <laughs> to the overhead <laughs> cam mic, sorry. <laughs> Glowforge has got two cameras inside it. And I'm not sure if everybody knows this or not, but we've got one here in the lid, which is a wide angle camera. And then we have one here in the print head where the laser comes out, which is a macro camera, it's a close-up camera. And after the print's finished, this camera here takes a photo of the entire bed and figures out what we've done. And then, and this is what we're seeing right now, it's moving the print head to specific points on the print that we've already done to take very accurate photos and figure out where those points uh -huh. are in 3D space. So it's basically creating kind of like a, a map, map, if you like, yeah, of this design. And why that's important is, in a second, the system's going to tell us to move the material through, we'll slide it through the machine, and it's going to do the same thing again. Take an overhead image, figure out where those points are really roughly, send the head across to find out where they are exactly, and then automatically line up the design for us. So that seems like a lot. But what you should take away from that is you don't need to think about it because computers and robots will do it all for you. Yes. <laughs> so that's going to... As they should. <laughs> as they should. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Bending them to our will. Uh, so that's going to think for a second. Oh, excellent. We're on to the next step. So Mike, perfect. You have it there. Um, next instruction, shift material forwards. And when I talked about instructions previously, this is where we need to pay some attention. Because we are using cameras and very precise movements here to line these things up, just be careful not to move the material until the uh, instructions tell you to. So next step, shift it forwards. Now, if we go to the overhead, maybe, Mike, this might help people see what's going on. But I'm literally just going to push it back. Oh, sorry, push it forwards. So the material pops out the front. And I want to leave about three or four inches inside the bed. And I'm not sure if you can quite see that. I mean, you might need to grab the handheld, I think, barely. If that's yeah. Right. Just to mm -hmm. show how much is left inside there. So there's still there. some of this design Absolutely. in the bed. And that's important because the cameras need to see where it went. So basically. the second print basically isn't a full bed's worth. Absolutely. It's like two thirds. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. I see. I think it's about eight or 10 inches or something like that in height. OK. Um, so then. But it's nice and easy. And actually, it's arbitrary as well. You can move this just a couple of inches if you want to. You can move it a great distance if you want to. You don't have to be particularly precise so long as there's some of the print left behind. Got it. OK. Well, that's nice. Precision is not a, a human uh, trait. Exactly, which is why we made this. Yeah, it's, uh, it's tricky. It really is. 
Uh, believe me, I've tried to do this manually. It doesn't work. Uh, um, so we're going to click continue and we'll do the next step. And this is where, again, the system is going to take a photo of the material using this camera on the lid. Then it's going to send the printer head across further down the material this time to look at these different points um, on the material. Now, it's going to take just a few moments to figure all that out. Um, so maybe we can answer a couple of questions yes. like, does that? We're um, definitely yeah. getting them. Uh, <laughs> Tamitra was asking about this cork. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's super cool, isn't it? Yeah. I, that was, I think we bought that for a photo shoot. It's just a cork tile. It's meant to be a pin board. It yeah, oh, it, looks, it, might, like it might have like a sticky back on yeah, it if yeah, we yeah. were to peel this off. It's about a quarter inch thick, something like that. Yeah. It engraves and scores beautifully. It's yeah, a cork great is thing. really fun. Another thing I've seen us do with cork is a thinner version of like a cork veneer, if you will, just like a cork sticker. And then you can make like a wine bottle label or, um, or what have you, yeah. like coffee cup holder, that kind of thing. Um, I've just run around with this handheld to see if I can show anybody this. It might happen too quickly. Lisa but says, I'm noticing it's not aligned exactly along the edge of the crumb tray. Will the, will the camera adjust that alignment? Absolutely. Wow. Yeah. So um, I'm hoping you'll see this flash of light underneath the printer head. There you go. So the visible laser there. And then there's probably going to be a circle of light. There you go. Perfect. So that was the head taking that close-up picture and figuring out where it wow, is. Wow, look at you. But in answer Hot to that, that specific question, yeah, <laughs> I've done this a couple of times before. Um, yes, the software will accommodate um, slight amounts of inaccuracy, if you like. Um, now, I actually just kicked that. I hope I didn't ruin that. Oh my gosh, I, I got did too you? excited. I, I, think it, I think it's all right. I think it's I okay. Didn't see, I didn't see the board move, but that should be one oh, of our top. Oh no, it really should be. That should have been number one, right? Uh, is don't kick the... Don't kick the material. Uh, <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll be fine. What are you sure. going to do? Just cross your fingers? Uh, let's see. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's, let's, let's see. It's going to give me a preview on the screen so we can take a look and see what's going on. Okay. Uh, and we can make a decision from there what we want to do. Okay, so great. Let's do a couple uh, more questions. Yeah, of course. Uh, someone here in chat, Debbie, was asking what best program to use. Uh, Debbie, if you're asking oh, about mm -hmm. design programs, um, so there's a few options. If you don't know how to design, aren't a designer, you could purchase designs for your Glowforge mm -hmm. on places like Etsy or the Glowforge catalog. So like this, you could just buy for, I don't know how much it was. Um, we, well, sometimes they're included with um, a premium membership. Mm -hmm. Sometimes yep. it's like a design of the month. We've got different things going on. We've also got a free community designs forum section, Com free design section on the community forum, <laughs> community.glowforge.com, <laughs> free designs, That's check a great that place out. to go, yeah. Great um, for inspiration too, actually. Oh, mm -hmm. oh yeah. But if you want to design and you know design programs, um, so I tend to stick to really super simple ones, not even design programs, but just anything that can output like a PDF or an SVG mm -hmm. file for me. So I like to use things like Canva or uh, Google Slides. I just keep it really simple to get, you know, clip art and fonts and things mm -hmm. like that. Um, it's basic amazing shapes. what you can achieve with them. Yeah. Really. yeah. But you can get more advanced than that, of course, with uh, Adobe Illustrator or Inkscape or even CAD or things like that. Mm -hmm. The important thing is that you're outputting a PDF and that you are um, coloring the different steps in the software, uh, different colors uh, to indicate to the Glowforge whether you want something to be cut, engraved, or scored. Um, Absolutely. Nick can show you that really quick when we're back in the app. Um, if you like, let me let me know if that was what the question was about. That might have been too <laughs> in the weeds with design. but. Uh, we do have some previous uh, live streams that we recorded about designing oh, yeah. dive into software. So if that is something you're interested in, head to our YouTube channel, take a look at that playlist. You've got Design 101, Absolutely. you walk through everything. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, exactly. So you get to Good see point. that in a lot of detail. Someone's asking if we can engrave on rock, actually. Yes, and let me show you. Don't touch some it. I will not <laughs> touch it, oh my gosh. At least you could blame it on me. Um, here's a slate. Uh, oh, sorry, yep. Coaster cheese board situation, oversized coaster. Um, this was Kyle and Bailey. That's from our wedding. I don't think this was actually used in our wedding, but it could have been. It could have been, yeah. You know? Yeah. And these I'm natural like, this materials. wasn't my font. Wait a minute. <laughs> but yeah, look at that. So it's like a cheese board. Yeah. We bought these on uh, just Amazon or something like that. And then, yeah, natural materials. I mean, we just popped this in. We didn't even put on any masking. It's just really yeah. easy and they if look you're, great. I mean, if you're a landscape gardener or something like this, materials oh. like this that can live outside would be perfect. You could do house numbers on this. Yes. You could do all sorts of different things. Good point. Yeah. So and then cool. I've seen, I mean, rock will depend, of course, on the kind of rock, like mm -hmm. sandstone, I know, uh, is engravable because yeah, it's that real works soft. Really well. and, and that one, I think by applying different 
types of speed and power. You can actually get different colors yes. as a result. Uh -huh. So there's all sorts of cool stuff you can do with different kinds of rocks. The yep. community forum is a great place. Anything that's not proof grade, which is our materials that the Glowforge can read with the camera and says, great, we know that material. We know how to cut and engrave on it. If it's a rock that you pick up, uh, you might want to check out the community forum and see who else has tested and tried something similar. Yep. It's amazing what's on there. It really is. Now we're ready for the next stage, Bailey, by the way. Oh, great. Um, so to let people know. How's I, it looking? <laughs> it, it looks great. And that's because I was able to redo the alignment stuff. Oh, you did? I, I wasn't too confident. That was that, fast. Oh, yeah. It's, it's pretty quick. Oh, okay. It really is. It's not too bad. Maybe about five minutes or so for each one. Um, but I was just a bit concerned that it wasn't going to line up. So <laughs> I asked it to take the photos again. It did. Great. And if we jump over to the screen, which, there we go. Perfect. I you haven't were sneaky. touched I didn't this even at all. You were doing that. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you know, I'm a professional, so. Um, I haven't touched this design, but you can see with my mouse here that the software has basically grabbed this section and moved it down and butted it up against the bit of the print that we've done. Now, it doesn't line up perfectly visually here when it comes to each individual point. And that's a, a, a technical reason that we won't go into right now. But what I'm looking at is whether these points are aligned along the same plane. So if we draw a straight line across here, they look pretty good. And basically at that point, so long as we're happy with that, we press continue and the button's gonna light up and we're gonna take our print just like normal. So we'll give that a second. We'll hit the button on the, on the printer. So even though then, uh, to your eye, you can tell that those lines are like a little bit off, mm -hmm. you're using, sorry, can you say that again? You're using the, the plane to yeah. tell that it's on. So if you drew a line across mm -hmm. all, of the, all of the pieces of the print that you just finished, mm -hmm. and then all of the pieces of the print that you're about to start, if those two lines line up, then that's perfect. Okay. And this, for those of you who are interested, this is a fisheye lens, which warps the image just a little bit. Ah. And that's why with wide designs, we get a bit of distortion at the edges. Uh -huh. So that's just that. Um, but I hit print again. Our button is now flashing. Um, so Bailey, once again, if you want to hit, the, uh, hit that button and we can kick this print off. So we'll let it get started and then we'll jump in there with the handheld and show you exactly what is happening. It doesn't always start from where the end of the last print was. Um, so I'll let it do a few lines and I'll show you exactly what's going on. Uh, Susan is asking, how long does it take to make this project? This hmm. specific one, yeah. I think for each slice, was depending on the layer about seven minutes so i would say what about 40 minutes i think in total okay. for, for this particular and one and it'll end up being a 20 by yeah, 20 it's, it's it however big this is so i guess roughly 20 by 20 mm -hmm. four or five different layers um and of course you can use different materials oh yeah and different materials will affect the print time as well true um but, i'd love to see yeah. this in leathers or right lace or something Absolutely. Gosh, I wonder textiles even, yeah even textiles paper. yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah that could be really cool um but anyway here we are all right let's see how this is now we've got seven minutes until it's done if we go around here i'm hoping that you'll be able to see the laser oh it looks it looks like it already did it <laughs> for some of it at least anyway so it's finishing off the score when we actually get to the cut step we'll have one two three four, five, six, seven, eight opportunities to try and capture that moment where the lines connect automatically for okay. you. Okay. We'll you're try our best. We'll keep an eye on it. Yeah, that. yeah, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's think about other tips as well. So tip number one, we've got five tips for you. Tip number yep. one, keep material flat and support both ends. So if you're and, doing a big print. And don't knock it. Uh, don't knock it, yes, don't <laughs> knock it. Uh, if you do knock it, don't worry. Just hit the retry <laughs> button and the cameras will take those photos again. But it's best if you don't knock it. Don't do what I did. Do as I say, not as I do, I think is what you're supposed to say, right? So <laughs> keep the material flat. Use something to support both ends if you notice the material is hanging down a little bit. Number two, design full size. We yep. talked about designing a second ago. If you want to print something that's four foot long, 20 inches wide, design it that big in your software mm -hmm. and then send it to the Glowforge at that size. Now, if you wanted to scale something in the software, you absolutely could, but you don't have to. You can design it at actual size, which for those of you who are doing more complicated things like engineering stuff or furniture, makes it really easy. Rather than designing tiny. Exactly, and then harder. scaling and hopefully yeah, yeah. That you, hoping that you got the measurements <laughs> This particular right. design, like you mentioned, was smaller and you just blew it up yes. in the software. You yeah, just scaled absolutely, it. Absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I can show how that works in a second if people are interested. I didn't want to rescale it because I'd already printed part of it and I didn't want to throw off the scale, but that'll make sense in a sec. Nice. Uh, number three, follow the instructions in the app really carefully. Um, there'll be a few specific moments where it asks you to keep the material still, to move it forwards, to tell the software whether you're happy with the result. So follow those steps carefully and just click along as they guide you. Number four, 
This might seem counterintuitive, but really simple designs, let's say you just wanted to cut a square, can sometimes be more difficult than really complex designs. And that's coming back to the fact that the camera uses the print that you've just created to line up the first and the second slice. So if you imagine a square, if you cut just half of it, it's essentially a U shape, right? Okay. You only have two points for the camera to align ah, the next print. Or and that's not like a lot of this. information. Absolutely, there's tons of information. I see. So if you think of it like a like a map again, there's a lot of terrain on here that we can use to locate ourselves. Oh. If it was just like a vast plain in the desert somewhere or the salt flats, there's no features <laughs> that we can use to figure out where like we are. Like if we're just stranded. So, yeah, right, ex salt exactly. Flats. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't expect this to go into sort of geology and geography, but that's, that's where we are. So here we go. Um, and then the final one, number five. Because these prints are bigger, they take a bit longer, the materials are likely to be a bit more expensive. Sure. If you're aiming for specific results in terms of joinery, things that need to fit together, all this kind of stuff, consider doing a little test print of those on a scrap piece of material before you commit to your full size. And Personally, I'd recommend that for anybody. If you're testing something new, trying a new material, you do trying this in cardboard. Anything. Yeah, absolutely. Just do a quick test print to make sure it works as you expect before you can commit to this full size piece. Yeah. All do right. you want to catch one of the? Yeah, uh, I'll run around the front and let's see. We got three minutes. So what he's trying to catch left. again is the mm -hmm. moment that the laser exactly aligns a cut line from the first segment of this print to the second Yeah, it should be coming up in just a moment. You print. can see it kind of creeping so it's along. Cutting and, it's <laughs> and yes, this is cutting all the way through this material right now, which by the way is uh, eighth inch thick maple plywood. Oh, it just went wow. <laughs> Oh, there we go. Wow. Okay, all right, I think that's better. You can see, and then boom. Okay, wow, this is very exciting, I it's have pretty, to say. It's pretty fun to see. and. I mean, I'll emphasize as well that this laser is less than half a millimeter wide. So the fact that we're able to automatically align the start and the end of this print within half a millimeter, that's, I would say, pretty impressive. I Pro think that's to the team who worked on that. Kevin, yes. if you're listening, well done you. Kevin, Daniel as well, oh, we should have told I'll tell him, pass through live. This is a big day. <laughs> It's probably best we didn't tell him. He might have been panicking. That's true. I know. <laughs> I did just mention to our CEO, Dan, he walked by right before this. And I said, guess what? We're going to do a pass-through print live. And he's like, really? Wow. We've never <laughs> never done it before. But I know, which is silly, really, because it's so simple and so easy. Nick. We just haven't really got around to it. Yeah. I think it's often because we are not creating a lot of pass-through projects mm -hmm. in the office. Maybe if we were doing more of them, yeah, we'd be more. Yeah, that could be it. Um, that could be it. We will be, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, hopefully this has helped anybody out there who had specific questions about yeah. pass-through understand what the process looks like and how it works. If you have other questions, send them through, shoot them through right now and we'll see if we can answer them on air. Yeah, any more questions? I'm seeing a few. We can see we've got uh, two minutes left on this print. Susan says, I should not be watching this because I so want one. <laughs> Susan, that's, that's why we're doing this, yeah, to show yeah, you all the, <laughs> she's on to us. Shoot. Don't feel bad, Susan. She's yeah, like, you won't regret minute. it. Your video's making me want a glow forge. We're like, oh, whoops. <laughs> yeah, sorry. We'll tell our manager, Susan. Yeah, they'll be pleased with this. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. No, the, I think these these live streams are really fun for Nick and I to do. Um, oh, they're great. And and it's really fun to interact with all of, of you on here. We've got mm -hmm. a mix of people who have Glowforge printers already, and they. I've got a few people on here saying I have our pro and I haven't attempted pass through yet. I do think it can seem a little in, oh, intimidating. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And plus, you're probably like just already spending so much of your time doing non pass through projects. So you're like you're not going to run out of ideas there. Exactly. But, but this will be like a whole nother like aha eureka moment like mm -hmm. wait a minute how yeah. much bigger i can make all Definitely, of this yeah, yeah. <laughs> and actually that's a good point when it when we're talking about this seeming intimidating yeah don't feel you need to go and grab a piece of material like this to test this out oh, what no. you could do is grab your piece of material that once again Just i like put this. down and it's lost. here I, 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 I took it this time <laughs> But and to practice it with yeah. just a normal size. Stick it through the front sideways, mm -hmm. send a print, just a normal print, whatever it might be, turn on the pass through feature and just give it a go. You don't waste a piece of material, you get a feel for the technique. And I think to Bailey's point, it's gonna open up a whole ton of possibilities. You'll be like, I can do it. Look Absolutely. at that, that, yeah. that, that, mm -hmm. that moment of the two lines connecting was really oh, it's exciting. Pretty, it's pretty cool. I'm like, yeah. Woo! It's probably nothing for you, <laughs> you out there, but for us, this is, I, it's just so impressive. We're come, geeking out over here. Yeah, from six years um, when this was just a twinkle in, in our eyes, essentially, uh, to yes. this is great. Uh, Jenny is asking, what's the thinnest material you can cut or emboss on? So thin, oh. like literally tissue paper mm -hmm. or, yeah, look at this. is this amazing. This is a piece of copy uh, paper. If you watch the main video on glowforge.com, we've, we've engraved and cut on um, seaweed 
nori mm -hmm. in that and made sushi with it. And that, that was real. We That's did that right. for our, our video. Um, oh, Keith wants to know about ventilation. How are we doing the ventilation? Oh, yeah. Yes. So yeah. here's our little hand cam. So whichever Glowforge you're using, Basic Plus Pro, anytime you're printing, you need a plan to ventilate. So you, for a lot of people, that just means using the included aluminum hose, mm -hmm. like so. Just the same kind of uh, thing that you get with your dryer Yeah, at home. it comes comes with the unit, mm -hmm. you attach it to the back, and then throw the end out a window. Mm -hmm. Now here today, you'll notice our hose is going like the opposite direction towards <laughs> the camera. Uh, that's so that we don't trip ourselves. So I've got an air filter here to show you. If you don't have a way to vent out a window, you don't have a door, and you're in an enclosed space, you can get the glow for it. I'm so close, I can't even get it in this, this shot. <laughs> <Let me hold. laughs> There you go. There you go. <laughs> I'll, I'll model next to it. There we go. Perfect. Glowforge air filter. It's like the size of a little recycle bin or something like that. Uh, you can get it on glowforge.com. It does have a replaceable air or cartridge in it. Mm -hmm. So that will fill up with the smoke and particulates uh, that are made from your material. And it will fill up faster or slower depending on the material. Like Draftforge fills it faster than acrylic, for mm -hmm. example. But this allows you to print in, you know, a basement apartment or somewhere or when it's, you know, negative 20 degrees out and you don't <laughs> want to open the window. So it's a great option for uh, that. Really great. Very simple to use as well. Yes. All right. Uh, and... and Keith is just saying, oh, great for Christmas and Halloween. Oh my gosh, yes. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> yes. Can you imagine the decor you could produce with this? Yes. I mean, my, my son is obsessed with Halloween. He's <laughs> already started buying his decorations. He's three. So Yeah, he's yeah. three, by the way, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he already knows what he's gonna be. It's a ghost buster. Um, yes. Yeah, oh yeah, he's really into it. Um, but this this type of thing for producing anything from tombstones to giant spiders and what have you, like, it's it's perfect, it really is. I love it. Um, our print's finished, by the way. Wow, um, we so, did it. Yeah, Mike, if you wanna switch to the overhead, um, you probably see the extent of that. And what I quite like about this shot is you can see the, oh wait, no, sorry, it hasn't finished. There's a tiny bit left to do. Oh, what? I was absolutely wrong. I didn't push it forwards quite far enough and there's a tiny bit of this oh. print left to do, so. <laughs> For those of you who are interested, you get to see it one more time. <laughs> Great. Yeah, so, so if you're just joining us, um, we're doing a pass-through print, and Nick is about to have the software aligned for a third time. It's done It's done what you see here in two separate sections, and mm -hmm. now it'll do the third bit. Absolutely. So um, if we just flick to my screen really quick, Mike, you can see in the sidebar again, we've got some instructions. Shift material forward. We're going to follow that. So overheads, camera mics. Thanks. <laughs> I'm going to slide it forwards, and you'll notice a few pieces Ooh. might fall out of this, but that's okay. It's just what happens. And we just need to go just a little bit further. That is going to yeah, hit, uh, hit that. <laughs> let me just pull that bit out right there. Or at least lay it flat. There, there you go. go. Yeah, something like this. And this is one of the reasons why we want to keep our materials flat. Um, ideally, And supported from both sides, which we're not currently doing. Yes. Actually, it's not off the table yet, so it would be a little bit hard to support it from yeah. that side. What I don't want is for that material inside the Glowforge to uh, touch the printer head as it's Exactly, because the head right here is going to move around. And so if you're doing, yeah, yeah. if you have high objects, you need to be careful. It's not going to bump it. Perfect. So hopefully you saw that. I just slid it through um, a few inches. And you can still see that the print is inside the bed and it can see, when I say it's Glowforge, can see the end of the print, the last bits that we created. Now, in our software, all I have to do is hit continue. And what's gonna happen is this camera again in the lid is gonna take this wide photo of everything that's in the bed. Mm -hmm. It's gonna take a look roughly how far I moved this piece of material. Uh, and then it's gonna send the printer head, this one right here where the laser comes out, which has a macro camera in it to take some detailed close-up pictures of these different points of intersection. So the software can automatically line up the next piece. Cause I bet you, I did not push that through straight. Guaranteed. <laughs> what? <laughs> I tried, but you know, I, I definitely did not. Especially not when we're considering the laser is less than half a millimeter thick. So that's gonna process for a little bit, maybe five minutes or so, we'll see the head come across. So let's grab a few more questions in the meantime, yeah, if we have time. Absolutely, so we, we hit on design software a little bit. Um, we didn't talk much about proof grade materials oh, or true. really show any of our examples back here. We have just been hoarding and collecting <laughs> um, some really awesome customer. Yeah, why don't we yeah. just kind of show off our table here. So what we've been doing lately is buying uh, Glowforge owner Etsy store prints. Mm -hmm products this is a new one that just popped up so this is wood some kind of beautiful wood it looks like maybe a maple oh, or something cool. like that and then uh resin that tessellates really nicely into that sweet yeah. like little beehive oh, i'm actually just going to run around the front bailey sorry really yeah, no, quick no, no, you're good. just to show people so 
this is the printer head right here. It's come across, see that red light? I'm gonna see a white light in just a second. Uh, and that is the printer head, there you go. Taking photos of the end of the prints here and figuring out exactly how to line up that design. Wow. So it's gone back home, doing a bit of math. And uh, in a second, we'll be able to do the next part of the print. Oh, and I need this back again. Back to our table, <laughs> yes. Okay, so here are um, acrylic earrings. Mm -hmm. I love these ones. I didn't even know we bought these. I had already like seen oh, these I on remember. Instagram. We, we showed these on a previous I live think so. stream. I think we showed him yeah. a picture of them, but they're awesome. It's like uh, some kind of iridescent um, oh, that's uh, beautiful. acrylic and then mm -hmm. just the mirrored gold. And I don't know, gorgeous. Love those. Yeah, this is see, wood, I believe. I think cool. this is painted draft board actually. Yeah, that could um, be leather as well. That would be a good material oh, yeah, for yeah. those. Uh -huh. These are wood and then they've added some felt, which is also laser cut. Oh, that's cool. So yeah. Cute. And you can, I don't know if you can really see that, but they've scored. We talked to about make scoring the earlier. Bow shape. Yeah. Yeah. So it looks like they're tied in a bow. Super realistic. So sweet. Over here that's is kind impressive. of the, the leather section, if you will. Oh, yeah. So a couple of <laughs> handbags. That one's engraved with the hummingbird right there. Mm -hmm. Um, and this one, I believe, I think they bought it off um, on, online somewhere and then just added the bag. Exactly, and it. which is which is another really popular thing to do. You know, mm -hmm. buy things like this cutting board that you can buy at, you know, or or this that we showed before mm -hmm. um, that you can buy on Amazon or at the craft store or what have you, and then engraving and personalizing. You can even do custom orders if you own a yep. shop, that mm -hmm. sort of thing. Are we ready to print? I think so. Let's give it a let's give it a try. The button should flash. Uh, in a second. Okay. It's preparing and we should be good to go. Now we're running over a little bit here, but I think we'll have time to finish this section. Let's just see. Oh yeah, it's only a couple of minutes. You want to smack that button again, Bailey, yes, for me? Yes, yes. There we go. Okay, I'm seeing a question. What happens if you need to open the lid because when you move the board, a piece dislodged and you need to move it out of the way? Could That's you open it and recalibrate question. for the next piece? Yes. So you'll notice in the instructions on the right hand side, when it asks you to move the material forwards, it does say you can open the lid at this point. Oh. And so that's a great point. We oh. could have done that to pull out that piece of material or secure something. Yeah, because so, yeah, if you saw when we were sliding fine. it forward, one of them kind of like pivoted <laughs> up. <laughs> so he was able yeah. to fix it from the front, but you could have yes. opened the lid. Could have opened the lid. That okay. would have been absolutely fine. Yeah. Good to know. Uh, can you use the pass through for a pair of jeans? Yes. I think we've actually seen people do that before. Or like, yeah, that's yeah, true. yeah. I guess the sleeve um, of a jacket or something like yeah, that. That would be thin enough. Oh, we've got I this awesome this apron. apron he's grabbing over here. Yeah, mm -hmm. I guess that would have been passed through or careful folding. Well, yeah. Yeah, one of yeah, the Yeah, I two. don't remember how we made this one, but you could have absolutely done that in the pass through. Yeah, this is like some um, denim. One of, our, one of our colleagues mentioned this earlier and I forgot to point this out, but we're talking about uh, the possibilities with pass through and the potential limitations you have with the plus and the basic. Mm -hmm. With pass through, this sign, which is right now in a couple of sections, had a third section on, could have been produced in one giant one big piece board. with the pro. Sure. But with the plus or the basic, if that's what you own, you can do it like this, creatively join them together and still achieve the same kind of look. Exactly. Uh, I will say one fabric tip, uh, especially with denim, but I think just for um, textiles in general, you want to stick to natural materials mm -hmm. as much as yeah. possible. So like a lot of women's jeans has stretch in them. And when you'll find that when you engrave that, it exposes all this like rubber cords underneath yeah, and you, you don't want to deal with it. Yeah, yeah. Well. So yeah. Yeah. Do, do, <laughs> do attempt jeans and do make sure that they're uh, real <laughs> denim. All right, we're almost done with this. Now I noticed what happened. So I had moved it far enough, but I'd left the other layer of my print in the software and so Glowforge tried very helpfully oh. to start the next layer of this design. Oh. So you'll notice in here, we actually have, Not if I come did around. Not only it finish it, it started. It started the next one, yeah. I see. So what I could have done in the software is move this out of the way. Oh, actually you can see there, those lines joining up again. Watch that piece fall. <laughs> Look at that. It's really quite impressive. And we're almost there. I think that's, I think that's it, yeah. Hey. All right, perfect. So we can pull this out. And again, I'm gonna go from back to front like this. And it's gonna be a little bit stuck because of those little pieces that fell out of here. <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay. It occasionally happens. Should Sometimes with open small- open it to unwedge right there? Oh yeah, that's a great point. Sometimes um, with prints go. like this, what I might do is actually open the lid and put a little bit of tape on some of the loose pieces inside just so they don't fall. Yeah, but let's clean up. Here we are. Yeah, here wow. we have. Wow. Just Lots of all these out. pieces that That's can that. fall out. So here's, we talked about scoring earlier. I don't know if the person who asked about scoring is, is still, still here. here. <laughs> but you can see how we have some score lines and that is designed here, so let's that when show this we put, 
put this layer. I'll give you so that. So see the score grumpy. lines, and then so score lines help us know where to line this up, like so. I think it's like a, maybe like this. <laughs> maybe like this that <laughs> Nick just did. <laughs> but yeah, you can see how that works, and it's super accurate too. And then this layer here goes on the back. And then you could do another one up here. Yeah, absolutely. So Paint you can these. see how quickly you can build up something quite significant, really. If I hold this up, you get an idea of the scale, you know? Yeah. I'm a normal sized person, I think. <laughs> <laughs> We're both seven yeah. feet tall. Yeah, can you imagine? <laughs> Um, oh, fantastic. There you go. Yeah, I that hope, was fun. I hope that was helpful so if you're still for some with of you us, out there. Uh, remember, we do have that discount code. It's glowforge.com slash pass through live. And that's good for 500 off the pro, mm -hmm. which is the one with the pass through 250 off the plus or 100 off the basic. It's good through the end of the month, which is a week from today, August mm -hmm. 31st. Um, we do these live uh, prints pretty often. Mm -hmm. So make sure you're following us on YouTube, subscribe over there. And that way we'll pop up when we're going live um, or f uh, follow us on Facebook and uh, you'll see us there too. But thanks for joining. And I hope you liked this one. This was a lot of fun. Thanks. Yeah. For, I, thanks for driving, Nick. That no, was of course, awesome. you're, you're very welcome. These are super fun for me. Yeah. I'm really glad of all the questions that people throw at us, yeah. all of the fun comments and things that we have in chat. <laughs> I do have one request. For those of you on uh, who are still with us right now, if you have any feedback about these, any things that we could have done mm. differently, anything you'd like to see, um, jump onto YouTube later on and find this video um, and just leave something in the comment yes. section. Um, we'd really appreciate it um, to, just to make these better, essentially, for everybody who's watching. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, All right. that's it, I think, yeah. for today. Thanks Happy so Tuesday. Much, everybody. Thanks for joining. Bye.